Good day, students. My name is Fanny Yi Sunday Olateju, your literature and English teacher. Our topic for today's literature lesson is the analysis of non-African poem titled Bat, B-A-T, by D.H. Lawrence. Lesson objectives. At the end of the lesson, students should be able to interpret the poem, analyze the poem in terms of poetic devices, discuss the themes of the poem, and explain the events in the poem. Original poem will be read by David Humes. At evening, sitting on this terrace, when the sun from the west beyond Pisa, beyond the mountains of Carrera, departs, and the world is taken by surprise. When the tired flower of Florence is in gloom, beneath the flowing brown hills surrounding. When, under the arches of the Ponte Vecchio, a green light enters against stream, flush from the west, against the current of obscure Arno. Look up, and you see things flying between the day and the night, swallows with spools of dark thread sewing the shadows together. A circle swoop, and a quick parabola under the bridge arches, where light pushes through. A sudden turning upon itself of a thing in the air. A dip to the water. And you think, the swallows are flying so late. Swallows? Dark air life looping, yet missing the pure loop. A twitch, a twitter, an elastic shudder in flight. And serrated wings against the sky, like a glove. A black glove thrown up at the light, and falling back. Never swallows. Bats! The swallows are gone. At a wavering instant the swallows gave way to bats by the Ponte Vecchio, changing guard. Bats and an uneasy creeping in one scalp, as the bats swoop overhead, flying madly. Pipistrello, black piper on an infinitesimal pipe. Little lumps that fly in air and have voices indefinite, wildly vindictive. Wings like bits of umbrella. Bats! Creatures that hang themselves up like an old rag to sleep, and disgustingly upside down, hanging upside down like rows of disgusting old rags, and grinning in their sleep. Bats. Not for me. Summary of the poem, Bats. Throughout the poem, the poet persona is just an observer speaking out his thoughts to passive listeners. The style is referred to as a dramatic monologue. It is the evening time, as the persona sits on a terrace, which is a flat area, created on the side of a hill. The opening stanza introduces the reader to the poem setting in Italy, where geographical landmarks are mentioned, like Pisa, Florence, Mountains of Carrara, Ponte Vecchio, and River Arno. The poet is observing that the sunset beyond the hills in the west, as the sunlight disappears gradually and darkness is falling in, just as the flowers of Florence are losing their beauty. In a few lines, the poet persona gives a description of acrobatic display of birds as they swoop, circle, and dive into the river Arno. The persona suspects the birds to be swallows, but their movements, features, and time of the day make him to doubt the bear's identity as swallows. He concludes that they are not swallows, but bats. Like powerful security guard, swallows have left the bridge for bats as the night approaches. Welcome to the second segment of today's program, which is the continuation of the summary of the poem, Bats. 
the realization that the poet is observing parts annoys him as he piles up disgusting words and sentences to describe the birds. Bats fly madly. Their voices vindictive. Their feathers scary and tattered like beads of umbrella. Bats sleep upside down and even smiling madly while asleep and hang themselves up like an old rack. Bats may very well be symbols of happiness and good fortune in China, but not for the poet persona. The impure frenzy with which a bat flies round and round its room in mad circles of delirium disgust and disconcert the persona. Students, Another segment is thematic preoccupation of the poem. Hey, hatred. The poet considers the bat as the ugliest of all creatures. The poet's description of bath portrays the bird as awfully disgusting, nauseating, and noisome, and an omen of ill fortune. Beginning of quotation, creature that hang themselves up like an old rag to sleep and disgustingly upside down. End of quotation, line 39. B. Another theme is woman's food is another man's poison. Although the poet persona depicts the, the bat in the heart images of ugly creature, beginning of quotation, hanging upside down like rows of disgusting old days rag and grinning in their sleep, end of quotation. The Chinese people consider the bat as a symbol of happiness, line 44. So what the poet considers as a repugnant bed is a creature that brings gladness, joy, blissfulness, and blessing to the people of China. See, another theme is nature. Nature is given a priority in this poem by the ways the poet describes the beautiful setting. Names of ancient cities and places in Italy, like Pisa, Florence, mountains of Carrara, and the arcs of the Ponte Vecchio and Rivano are beautifully described. There is animistic nature worship in the presentation of swallows that shows that an acrobatic display in beginning of quotation. A sudden turning upon itself of a thing in the hair. A deep to the water. End of quotation. Line, lines 14 to 15. Also, the poet gives credence to the sun from the west. Evening. Tired flower. Brown eels. A green light stream the day and the night hey the water as parts and pursuits of nature d another thing is right and wrong decision in line 11 the persona draw our attention to flying birds at first, the persona describes them as swallows on the close evaluations of birds' behavior and time of the day 
the personal changes his rank decision and exclaims that those cannot be swallows but bats. The earlier we realize our mistake in life, the better. We will pause here briefly. Student, welcome to the third segment, which is poetic devices. One, language. The persona adopts a conversational tone. In order to show his hatred for the bats, the persona refers to them and their characteristics in effective language like flying madly, voice indefinite, widely vindictive, or drag, disgusting, etc. The persona also mentioned places like Pisa, Carrara, Florence, Ponte Vecchio, and Rivano to establish the fact that Italy is the physical setting of the poem. Two, simile. The use of simile is apparent in the poem. The ugly appearance of the birds is described as beginning of quotation, wings like beads of umbrella, end of quotation. Another quotation, creature that hangs themselves like an whole drag, end of quotation. The hapt description of bats show the persona's aversion for the creature. Three, the use of personification. Nature like sun, Vegetation, swallows, flowers, and birds are all accorded human attributes to draw the reader to the poet's belief system, as in beginning of quotation. When the tired flower of Florence, end of quotation, line five, flower can never be tired like human being. Another device is the use of rhetorical question. The persona engages the rhetorical question to ask the silent, silent audience about identity of the creature, as in swallows. And later, the persona asks, never swallows, but end of quotation. Another device is antithesis. Bats are the symbols of happiness and good fortune in China, but the poet considers bats as disgusting and heal omen creatures. Also, the poet has a great love for swallows, but bats receive a great condemnation from him. Another device is metaphor. The seemingly sarcastic and negative charge against the birds make the creature a repugnant bird, as in Black Piper, line 55. Changing Guard. Changing Guard is a military metaphor that shows swallow as gas during the daytime while birds do the same at night. Likely examination questions. One, discuss the use of imagery in the poem, but Two, examine the poetic devices in the poem. Bibliography. One, Fanny Yi S.O. 2014. Exam Reflection Literature in English, 12 Poems. Two, the Norton Anthology of Modern Poetry. Three, Voice of David Hymns, recorded from YouTube. Thank you very much. God bless you. I wish you the best. Mm -hmm.